desires that you see. Greater than me. Yes, so that's usually should be the prayer of our leaders and leaders of yesteryears. Leaders who actually shall hand over the baton to the leaders of tomorrow so that they can be greater, better opportunities for them to actually thrive, not only as uh, young emerging leaders, but also as leaders that will take this nation to the next level. But how far have they been able to do this? Well, it depends on the parameters you use in judging the government, not only the federal government, but government at all levels. But because you look at uh, unemployment as a very, very huge behemoth and that stares in the face so many governments of the world. Unemployment, I tell you, is a global issue, uh, just like uh, insecurity. But at the same time, what are some nations are doing right that Nigeria is not doing? Before now, we usually complain about lack of data or statistics to actually tell us how many are the unemployed in Nigeria? How many are the underemployed in Nigeria? Uh, what is the number of the women? Uh, what is the number of the men who are either unemployed or underemployed? But it appears that uh, we have figures so this time around. Uh, for some time now, we've been having figures of unemployment rates in Nigeria though it is a very disturbing one i don't intend to add to your headache or migraine this morning but i'll tell you that uh, as of the last quarter of 2016 unemployment rate in nigeria increased to 14.2 percent okay so how do we break that down um let me just simplify it um, last quarter of 2016 we can just say that there are a total of 28.58 million Nigerians uh, who, are, who belong to the labor force that were either unemployed or underemployed. And if you look at uh, that figure to the uh, preceding quarter of 2016, you find out that there was uh, only an increase and not a decrease. So what has happened ever since uh, the APC government came into power in 2015. Don't forget that this uh, administration that is now in the saddle at the center, uh, President Muhammad Buhari's uh, government and the party promised about 3 million jobs yearly. Was it all uh, campaign and propaganda? Or was it that uh, what they got there, they realized that it's a very, very tedious job, coupled with the fact that we had to battle with economic recession? Well, how do you manage to create jobs during economic recession? Uh, don't forget that uh, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics actually said that Nigerians actually lost more jobs in the past year uh, than we created. So that tells you that as much as we are trying to create jobs, we are also sending more people to the labor market. How many jobs really has uh, the government been able to create? That is a very, very cogent and pertinent question. Now, we are still uh, talking about uh, about 500,000 uh, Empower volunteers that will take home 30,000 Naira monthly. Uh, Gamari, what can you do with 30,000 I'm sure it can, it can hardly handle your hair, your hair that I'm looking at. <laughs> I even fix your nails and pay your bills. But come on. That is the reality on ground. Uh, well, one, <laughs> yeah, one, one, one thing, uh, uh, Agamario, that we really need to look at is that uh, 500,000 volunteers, 500,000 jobs, the police recruited about 10,000 jobs, uh, the Ministry of Works, uh, Power and Housing has, has also recruited some people. You know, the aggregate sum of all these jobs is still less than 700,000 uh, when you compare to about 28 million Nigerians that are actually begging for jobs. But one particular point which some Nigerians and especially experts have pointed at is that government need not worry or begin to belabor itself uh, about uh, employment. Just to focus on creating an enabling environment, uh, 
bailout comatose industries and moribund industries so like that they put us still that can employ thousands and uh, fund uh, private uh, companies fund msmes which are usually uh, called or tagged the main drivers of the economy and then this will actually do well and then employ more people and then they will become business owners and employers of labor that is how developed nations do it i don't know whether that's the way to go or some have said well let everybody go back to farm if we farm you cannot say you're jobless when you work for money tonight farming making money then you stop thinking about a thirty thousand era per month job what do you think yeah we should all go back to the farms i'm going back to the farms again mm -hmm. <laughs> you mentioned you talked about labor market and yeah. you know what really came to my mind was labor market do we truly really have a labor market in Nigeria? Mm. Hmm. Okay, how do we describe that? Hmm. What does it look like? What does it look like? Hmm. Okay, but I'm not going to start talking about that, surely, <laughs> because that would be my own opinion. We yes. are all subjected to our own entitled private or own opinions. But then, some have come up with the issues of most of our youth being unemployed. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are no jobs. Yeah, we have people, we have students, you know, graduate being churned out. Yearly. yearly from different schools how employable are these youth, are these youth? Mm -hmm. you also mentioned an enabled environment which is very very key mm -hmm. even those who are in the supposed labor market yes. and those who have come to you know they they decided to get all out to do something with themselves and for themselves mm -hmm. even they're still struggling to survive power is there yes we have those who are out there. Very, very key. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to let's let's say that they talk about handiwork. Yeah. The hairdressers are out there. Mm -hmm. You have to start looking for fuel to power to your power chair. A generator. And then you have to sell that generator. Of course Maybe you have to sell it to many other things. Mm -hmm. All right. Even without without that you can't even you can't make hair. Mm -hmm. Enough hair. If anybody how would you find any woman perming the hair these mm -hmm. days? Because you get there, the person will say, sorry, there's no gen, no fail, nothing to, you know, to put on my, my equipment and yes. all that. Mm. That is just one out of many. Yes. In but, an environment, but, we truly have that. I, I, I tell you, it's, it's a mixed bag, really, when, when you look at uh, the, the, the best possible way uh, to actually fight uh, unemployment, to actually create more jobs, to actually empower the youth, and of course, uh, in, the, in the process, uh, empower the people of, of of a nation like Nigeria. We should also think about the kind of curriculum we run in our schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but, no, I don't think when I was in school we were not trained to, to you know to, to acquire not, skills. To mm. skills. That could be, that could be helpful. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, and unfortunately, then you would you would look at that boy that was supposed to be in school but is now uh, but, but was learning how to be a, a roadside mechanic then as a, as a as a low lifer not knowing that these are people who are actually making the money uh, or those who are actually show interest in going to painting or carpentry and the likes well let's quickly join a via phone uh, a member of the Yobu State House of Assembly, Honorable Ganiu Oyedeji, representing A41 State Constituency, is the chairman of the Youth, Sports and Employment Generation Committee in the House. So when we come back, uh, we should have Honorable Ganiu Oyedeji in the studio. In the meantime, we have a guest in the studio. I'll introduce him after we must have spoken to Honorable Ganiu Oyedeji. Stay with us, we'll be back. All right, so you're welcome back. Like I promised earlier, we now have on the line Honorable Ganiu Oyedeji, member representing the E41 State Constituency in the State House of Assembly. He's also the chairman, Youth, Sports, and Employment Generation Committee of the House. He's also a member of the All Progressives Campus APC, the government in power at the center and also in the state. Honorable Oyedeji, you're welcome to the debate show. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Honorable, we are talking unemployment in Nigeria, and of course, uh, your party promised to create about 3 million jobs annually uh, before you came into the saddle in 2015. 
uh, how do you feel that uh, the unemployment rate in Nigeria keeps increasing and then you've not been able to fulfill this promise? Thank you very much. You know, when we talk of uh, unemployment, I mean, we all know that, uh, I mean, in this country, is uh, one of uh, the major uh, problems we have. But uh, as the government, I want to, uh, I mean, you agree with me that uh, the APC led government has uh, done a lot. I mean, in trying to, I mean, reduce this uh, level of uh, unemployment in different, uh, in different ways. If you look at this at the federal level, at the state level, consistently, it's not done. And then you look at it through the Empower, through the feeding uh, program, so that all is clear towards uh, reducing uh, unemployment. But you will agree with me that uh, even though we say that a lot has been done, there are still uh, uh, room for improvement. So it's not something that will be I mean, done as a goal. So consistently, it is uh, being done. The Empower thing, apart from the first uh, bag that was done, the new one is also on. And I'm sure that uh, very soon the Lord will also be taking care of I mean, from that end. Now, can, can, let's, going back to um, the promise of creating more jobs, okay, and what the state in which we are in now, we're talking about over 28 million unemployed youths in the country. Do you really think that this empower is heating at anything, is really making any difference? Two years gone already, and we have just about a year more before we start running another campaign another election coming up. Do you think this empire is really doing much? Well, like I said, I mean, the, 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 the unemployment issue is there now. I mean, what that has been done in that area, I mean, is also a plus to this government. I mean, recall that uh, when this even started, it was then the question of uh, I mean, nothing is going to be done, nothing is going to be done. A lot of people that are supposed to even key in into the first uh, uh, one did not do that because they thought it's not going to be, I mean, uh, come to be. Uh, thank God that has been done. And I know that uh, this, uh, I mean, this new one too is also going to be done, even though we know that uh, the election is also coming up. And I know that before that, I'm the different... Uh, uh, things we still, I mean, is on the pipeline to be able to ensure that uh, our youth uh, get adequately uh, uh, engaged. Now, Honorable Yudiji, one alternative or way out that uh, some experts have actually uh, pointed out is agriculture. Uh, the agricultural revolution is uh, now getting louder than ever before. Do you think this is the way to go? to actually not only rescue the Nigerian economy, which is still battling recession, but also to make this seeming jobless youth millionaires in the long run. Yes, certainly, yes. I, I mean, I agree with that. And uh, you know that, uh, like you said, the era of uh, white collar jobs, I mean, is uh, I mean, not really there yet. And that is, uh, why is there, there is a need to really actually focus on the, on agriculture? And if uh, <laughs> you see that what has been done, even this uh, part of it is also uh, on agriculture. We have uh, uh, different uh, program, different schemes, even at the state level, that has been done to really be able to take care. I mean ask our, PMI, our people to actually go back to the farm. We have the ASFAD program. It's already there in different, uh, I mean, some of the uh, our local government that uh, some of our youth has also been. And we know that uh, if, if um, I mean, we can get this right through agriculture, like uh, that has been done, before, then uh, it 
will take a lot, I mean, out of uh, unemployment, certainly. So my advice also is that, uh, I mean, our youth will also take advantage of different programs uh, we have in this area of agriculture and, uh, and make their living through that too. How much soccer is this um, end power bringing to the youth and to the nation as a whole uh, with, uh, let's say, about 30,000 naira pay monthly with the state of our economy, with the state of things in the country at the moment when you get to the market, things are so much on the high side. Could you hardly could even, you know, go through the month with <laughs> with 30,000 naira. So how much soccer do you think this empire is bringing to the youth and to the nation as a whole with the pay of 30,000 naira? That's just before tax. Well, I mean, it's it, 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 They are getting, I mean, in the area of uh, even this empower, as little as the pay, I mean, is uh, something that uh, we also need to, I mean, really appreciate. And I think uh, even this youth too, they surely appreciate that. I mean, it's uh, better than at least not having anything to start with. And like I said, it's not just before the uh, uh, empower program alone. I mean, if some of our youth, I mean, are taking care through this uh, Empower. The, the iFat program is also there. The, you know, we have different uh, programs that they, are, they, are, they can key in into. Uh, I mean, somebody is uh, from zero level, is not having anything, and is, I mean, I think we're getting that 30,000 naira. And that will not even stop there. It's also a way of also open them up that, uh, I mean, even in their skill and all that so that it can also be useful in other areas. So, I mean, some of us who, you know, started, I mean, with uh, something small, by the time you get uh, uh, okay with that and you see something that is also better than that, definitely they have opportunity of uh, moving on. So, I want to say that as small as uh, the amount is, I mean, it's still something that uh, we need to really appreciate this government for committing this and being able to, I mean, uh, ensure that it is done. All right, Honorable Yudiji, thank you for joining us on the show this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. All right. Okay, uh, we're back to the studio. Uh, we have uh, a guest in the house together. We'll be looking at uh, all these issues. Uh, we have uh, the Nigerian representative of the Commonwealth Alliance of Young Nigerian Entrepreneurs in West Africa and also uh, a member of the Young Professionals for Agricultural Development in Nigeria Yard. Well, we have uh, in the studio Solomon and Nilonobo. You're welcome to the direction, Solomon. Thank you, um, Toby. Well, uh, 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 Toby, let me quickly ask you, okay. please. How, how do you describe our labor market? Well, um, the labor market, some, some people try to call it a favor market because actually there is no favor out there. Um, you have a lot of people looking for jobs. You have a lot of people looking for something to just do, something to wake up and do. Many people are just sleeping and waking up and when they see they can't do anything, they go to the streets and they're saying they're on Babariri, Babake and all those things. So the labor market, there is no job out there. Why do really. we have jobs? Um, but at the same time, I spoke to my brother just a week ago. He works in um, Fidelity Bank. And he told me, Solomon, when people say they don't have jobs, I laugh because I see jobs everywhere. Why? Because... Um, those people that really have the great at a very young age, maybe you're finishing at 21 with a first class in something like Obafemi or University, trust me, the banks will pick you up. So, but how many of us are going to do that? So, maybe just one or two percent of the graduates that finish every year will get such jobs, and constantly they are looking for such class of graduates. So if you talk to some people, they will tell you there are jobs. And the skills out there is not, um, the, the people don't have the skills. So if you ask me, I will tell you that even we, the young graduates, don't have what it takes to be in the, um, the, job, the, the market. 
the labor market. We need to develop ourselves. We need to add skills to our skills. Our educational system has not helped matters. I wonder why we are still doing the YDS, the calculus, even when you're studying microbiology. Things you don't really need. When they should focus and make you look at the things that you need. So that when you leave the educational system, you can stay on your own. So, is is a societal problem. I doubt if it's going to be solved in four years with all their promises. But every step in the right direction will go along. We imagine if since 1990 we provide one million jobs for every Nigerian every year, and we have a steady program um, without whether the government is um, SDP or APN or APC, a steady job creation program. Remember, sometimes a um, few years ago that we had uh, people that went to stadiums to go for um, interviews and so many people were killed. This was, this was not during the present administration. So the unemployment has always been there. So we have to strategically look at it. No government can fix unemployment by itself. So you have to create the enabling environment. You have to encourage um, the people themselves. The educational system has a lot to do. Um, ask any business owner how they, when they receive applications, they laugh. Because even from the applications, you know, this person can just do what he's saying he's going to do. So, and that's why we have a lot of unemployment now there. And even we, the youth, are not looking inward and saying, what has God blessed me with? What can I use my hands to do? We feel those other jobs are so dirty. We just want to work in the office, even when you don't have the skills. So for me, if you ask me, is is a whole lot of things that needed to be sorted out um, before we can begin to adequately reduce the unemployment rate in our country. All right, so quickly, uh, before uh, I can really ask that question, I wanted to find out from you what was your opinion of the submissions of Honorable ADG? Well, I think um, the government is trying its best. Um, if you ask me, their yeah, base is not yet enough. Um, I know there is own um, grown school for the program that takes care of some entrepreneurs that supplies them fish and meat and um, helps the farmers. Permit me, you know, from young agricultural, young professionals in agriculture development. So I know some of these things. I know they empower, they agro, they help, they teach, they tax. I know about you, when, you when currently taking applications. I know about Fadama guys. Fadama guys is the guys that is graduate, unemployed, youth and women support scheme. I know about the IFAD value chain program that supports people in rise and um, in, in cassava. I also know about the con conditional cash transfers, the Ubu State Youth in Agribusiness and all that. If we can keep doing this at every level, in every state, then we will begin to see difference consistently, year in, year out. Now, let me tell you, all these things I wrote out was not there 2015. Um, many of them were not there last Except year. Except you win. Really. Except you win. Yes. Many of them were not there last year, except Empower and you win. But things kept on coming up, coming up. So they're doing their best, but their best is not yet enough. Now, let me quickly um, draw your attention to what NYSC has been doing for some time now, mm -hmm. uh, the National Youth Service Corps, uh, which has been trying to make sure that there is a pool of resources that uh, you core members can actually uh, draw from to actually fund their business ideas yep. uh, and, 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 and of course uh, help them um, improve their manpower skills and of course to fund some of their businesses. Yep. Do you think this should be solidified so that it will go a long way in uh, not only preparing the UCA member after his uh, POP uh, for a job hunting, uh, what would I call it, a job hunting yep. uh, uh, phase rather than <coughs> a business building phase to be an employer of labor. Yes, we need to, and that's why I said the educational system, we need to develop ourselves to be job um, creators and not the job seekers. Um, because if we do that, then we will go a long way. The jobs are no longer there. Um, even the civil servant don't want to retire. So they will keep changing their age. And so they, they don't leave, nobody's going to come in. So C, um, CBN in conjunction with NYC is trying. And I think if you look at the rate of um, core members that pick up this opportunity, is not is nothing to write them about, um, because their mindset is still on the fact that 
Ah, trust God. Chevron is going to start um, recruitment. Trust God. Um, Shell is going to start recruitment. Trust God. Access Bank is going to start recruitment. And they, those guys will recruit. Just take about 20. And you're not part of them. So, but if you put up my put your mind off that and begin to focus on all these opportunities trust me to be opportunities abound and i have a whole lot of them here that people just need to look into it explore it if you if you did not get picked in one you can get picked in others but it is only people that have their mind fixated on these that could go into it. Many of us just want to keep applying, we keep writing aptitude tests, we keep doing everything. If you can pass an aptitude test, it means you can start a business. So, but we just want to use all these skills to work for others. We don't want to work for ourselves. In, in some climate, that, that's the deal. That's the in thing. That's the right thing to do. Because the jobs are there. So, I'm not blaming them for doing that. I'm saying since the jobs are no longer there, look somewhere else and create a business. Now you said that there are opportunities, opportunities abound. Yeah. Okay. Why are the youth not seeing these opportunities? You've been saying, and some other people have been saying. There is youth entrepreneur, um, youth entrepreneurial development program by CBN and some um, banks. They can give you three million naira if you go on their website. There is Tony Rimelu Foundation. They can give you up to ten thousand dollars. There is in our Dorio Partners that wants to invest in your business up to five million dollars. There is Youth Bank of Industry Youth Enterprise Support Program that can give you up to five million naira. There is um. BOI Dangote Foundation Matching Fund that can give you up to 50 million naira. There is BOI Matching Fund with Ogun State Government that can give you up to 50 million naira. There is FGN Special Intervention Fund for MSME, Truth FGN, BOI, NEDEP that can give you up to 20 million naira. Many of you don't know this. And nobody will come and tell you this. I sat down on the internet and I found out all of this. So we need to look inward. Um, the society is not going to forgive you if you don't make it. Trust me, it is a sin to be poor. So you have to see for yourself. You have to seek for yourself. You have to have that spirit that said, I want to live a better life. I want to make it in this life. What are those things that I need to do? Many of our youths are not thinking that way. All they are thinking is, I beg to apply. Okay, and now, there are no jobs. That, 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 that's a very good uh, point. Uh, before we go on a break now, let us quickly try to disabuse the minds of this uh, hunting uh, youth um, who obviously prefer the white uh, collar jobs which would you prefer that they are empowered to become business owners employers of labor and subsequently become millionaires or they earn a pay at the end of the month and wait for a promotion that may never come as it is, not only in the public sector, but also in the private sector. I want to you because it's a product of circumstance. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you graduated in United Kingdom, as you speak, um, or even in, in America, you can be some 70% sure that maybe you get a job in Merrill Lynch or you get in some NGOs or things like that. Trust me, I would like to work in Chevron, don't you? Everybody wants to work somewhere good. But if the opportunities are not available, then you quickly change your mindset and begin to create something for yourself if you've been on instagram on facebook you will see so many young nigerians that are into art and craft into fashion into belt into accessories into shoes into so many things and these guys are making it many of them did not even go to school many of them studied um, fisheries. Um, I know someone that studied fisheries and wildlife management is currently a chartered accountant working in Treasury Department of a bank. You just want to find out that what you've been doing is not it. You quickly change it and do something else. So if we fix our mind on getting white collar job, it's not going to work. That is what we prefer. That's it. your question is which do we prefer? We all prefer the white collar jobs. I, I don't want to get my hands dirty going to the farms. Um, even though I'm a farmer, currently I have eight acres, sorry, eight hectares of cassava farmland. I'm going into another five. So you, I don't want to get my hands dirty. If I have the easy does the, the easy way of doing things, but since the easy way is not there, and I'm not ready to live as a pauper, so I go to the farm, and that's the only option out of this. 
Now, one, one, one thing which I, I feel is fundamental is um, the role the parents and the society plays. Uh, can we quickly discuss this uh, before the break? Um, an average parent wants the child to become a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Now maybe they are shifting the golf post. Okay, you can become a, a nurse, uh, and then maybe the least you can become is maybe a teacher. <laughs> and even if you tell your dad or mom that you want to become a teacher, well, he will still look at you with some kind of eye. Uh, but when you say you want to become a farmer, they look at you with a different. Are you all right? You know, now before, <laughs> uh, after then, you now look at the creative industry. Yes. Um, actors, actresses, models, musicians. Uh, when we were growing up, it's a no, no. You dare not mention those things. That that is uh, your 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 dream of becoming. Now these are industries that are billion dollar industries, yep. generating industries. Yep. How can we tap this potential and of course help the youth out there to actually tap this potential? So, four things you said to me. One thing is the creative industry, the other thing is the society. Yes. Trust me, our parents do not want us to do those things. And you know what? Anywhere in the world, nothing makes you rich than tapping into your talent. Let me say that again. Anywhere on this planet, nothing makes you rich than yeah tapping into your talent. So if you have a very good voice, God has built you a very good voice, and you can go to one of these um, programs on TV and they just signed you and just become whiskey. <laughs> your life is good. And you, or you have a very good skills of bouncing the balls and all of a sudden you become Mikel Obi. Your generation can never suffer again. Those ones need to go, don't need to go to school. Many of them are even dropouts. So if you can tap into our skills, what has God deposited in us that we can use? Then we'll go a long way. Our society is not helping you as well because they don't because our mind has been fixated on white collar jobs. He works in Chevron, he works in Access Bank, he works in this, he works in that. That's what we all grew up to want to be. But if we change our mind to be, that's not the only way. There are many paths to success. It's not the only path to success. Um, so many rich men in our society today, and that's talking about society, prefer to build filling stations and hotels. In this Abiyokuta, um, they said that Ogun State is the highest. Ogun State has the highest number of industries in the whole country. Right? Please count how many industries we have in Abiyokuta. Maybe they are in all the outskirts of the state, on the way side, Agbara side. How many industries do we have in Abiyokuta? All our rich businessmen are building filling stations everywhere. They are building um, Hotel. hotels everywhere. Why? Because they want to turn our girls to prostitute and they want to make them bar men and bar women when they should build production lines that can add value and employ thousands rather than building hotels that are employing in their forties or fifties and create no value than pleasure. Some people will say same. So those those are the things that we should begin to so everybody has got a take out of this. This society, um, you got money, all you think about is um opening a bar, make quick money. When you should think about setting up a factory, it's so factory and you can add value. So those are things we need to do. All right, uh, at this juncture, we'll have to take a breather here for the National News at 10. After the National News, we will be back and we'll still have you in the studio. Solomon. In the, Lupo, uh, the Nigerian representative of Commonwealth Alliance of Young Nigerian Entrepreneurs in, everywhere in West Africa and a member of the Young Professionals for Agricultural Development. Stay with us, we'll be back. <coughs> yes, I also strongly believe that Nigeria will be great, will be better, and Africa will be great. But how do we make it great? That is a very, very silly question. It is by working tirelessly to make it better. And how do we do this? It's, uh, some have said it is by tilling the land, going back to the farm. That is the only revolution that we need. Some believe that it is by focusing on our handwork and acquiring skills and abilities that will actually fetch you money rather than you actually waiting for stipends at the end of the month. Is it hair that you can make? Go ahead and start making it. Is it beads that you can make? Is it jewelries? Uh, so people, so many people are doing that. Is it uh, decorations? A lot of people are earning millions now per year when you look at uh, the number of weddings that come up every weekend. Uh, so many, so many 
industries uh, that you can actually uh, tap into, so many sectors that the Nigerian youth can actually tap into. But the focus usually is on the government, it's focused uh, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the party in power at a particular point in time, uh, which usually promise uh, heaven and earth uh, to actually get uh, to that position and then eventually realize that how many people can government employ really that is the bitter truth how many people can government employ and the government even if it even if uh, the price of crude oil per barrel jumps to let's say 120 dollars uh, this this morning as we speak and so you think the federal government will say oh now we are earning uh, more than twice as we are earning per day, let us now employ about 20 million. Uh, yeah, you no, know, it's not done that way because that will also add to overhead uh, personnel costs, uh, the current expenditure, which we are always complaining about, uh, that the size of government is too much. So how can we get out of it? People have talked about entrepreneurship development, empowerment of the youth. If you're just uh, joining us, earlier on we spoke with Honorable Ganiu Oyedeji, who is a member of the Ogo State House of Assembly representing a for one state constituency and uh, is the chairman of the Youth and Sport and Employment Generation Committee of the House. He believes that uh, there is yet uh, uh, more room for improvement for the party in power, for the government in power to improve on its employment generation uh, drive. Uh, it's all here to Hulu, as he says, but he says that we should continue to appreciate the efforts of the government, especially through the Empower scheme, to at least create uh, some jobs. We have in the studio the Nigerian representative of Commonwealth Alliance of Young Nigerian Entrepreneurs in West Africa and a member of the Young Professionals for Agricultural Development, Solomon and Nino Lobo in the studio. Is there an area we've not touched? Okay, quickly. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to ask you before we went on that uh, okay. break for the national news. And the question is, what is really lacking in a youth? Is it lack of ideas or foresight problem or could it be resources? What exactly do you think is lacking in a youth? Um, thank you, Hagar. Um, for me, I think is all that you have said. Um, right from the educational system, we, uh, we were not given the right skills we need to get. Um, I think some of them are changing now. Some polytechnics and universities are having entrepreneurship program. Um, some final year students have been taking on what to do by themselves because um, there are no jobs out there. Some in the private universities, I know in the polytechnics as well. But we need to know, we need to get the skills. We need to know how to run a business. We need to know what to do if you couldn't get a job. Um, for some of us, um, there's something called um, employability skills as well. If that is your dream and you have the grades and you have the age, because the banks and other employers will put an age um, cap on it. So if you have all those things, then get trained on how to. It, for for some of us, for some of us that studied abroad, um, there's something called employability skills. It's a department on its own where they take you almost every week. They help you write your CVs. They give you um, how to do job interviews. They train you as part of your curriculum in the university. So it's a department on its own. Many of our universities here in Nigeria don't have that. So if we have all of these things, um, and the graduates, the young graduates themselves need to develop personal skills. There's something called personal development plan. What is your own plan to be the best you want to be? So many of us cannot speak good English, and you know, English is just a form of communication. We cannot write a simple letter, you cannot compose a simple email. Those are the skills that every Nigerian graduate should have. Now, the resources are also no longer there. Um, Nigeria is not as rich as it used to be before, so resources have dreamed old. But there are some international finance organizations that are still giving people some grants, some loans. I know um, Fadama guys are giving them up to 1 million naira. I know um, um, Value Chain, if at Value Chain, are also giving people subsidizing their um, family enterprise. And I know a whole lot of people that are doing that. Truth of the matter is, a thousand may apply and they might give 200, but at least piecemeal, little by little, people are getting the grant. And government should also step up its game. Government should provide the resources for people. So, if all these things can come together, 
then we can begin to reduce the unemployment rate we have because the problem is some of us are not even employable some of our youth some of our graduates are half big and not employable some of us are employable but we don't have the right skills to scale through the selection procedures and those of us that scale through the selection procedures they still take them to training in the banking sector telecommunication sector they still take you through the training that you need because they know our universities never did that so if a whole lot of things are to come to place holistically they will begin to reduce the unemployment rate. All right, I think uh, this juncture is time to allow uh, audience participation on the show this morning. You can call our studio lines at 0809 868 Good morning, Abdul Good morning. Yes. Good morning. My name is Abdul Rashid. Hello? Yes, Abdul Rashid. Yes. Yeah. I just want to make my own little uh, contribution to what is on the ground. And this issue of unemployment has been there for quite some time now. And it looks like um, we have been trying to you know, talk about this. You attend seminars, people who tend to overflog the issue. Now, I give you an example. I remember the, the gentleman that mentioned all the opportunities available. I have close to two or three of uh, my friends who have actually gotten this kind of phone. But they are also working in an environment that is so hostile. So this time, the issue of electricity is there. This guy got. 650,000 naira, and it's also supposed to be into fish. You understand? You look at the bad, uh, the roads, even connecting where it's going. He's not going to do all, not going to give himself access. You understand? You look at all the system, the principle of taxes. Now, the issue is yes, if all these guys have all this money in the world to start business and they're willing to learn, had they not also been to be faced with all the issues that we've been talking about? about the government also willing to I mean, provide this educational environment that will make sure that, I mean, those who are on the field are also willing to go into active and, and, and work for as, as a normal colleague. Because, for instance, you see somebody who started work two years ago and today they are, they are crumbled. Not because he doesn't have all the skills, customer relations, resource mobilization, all this. He has them both. But you see why there's no electricity, if I use you, if I and stuff like that. So, I mean, the question is, at what point will the government now say, we are, uh, we are not creating jobs. We are inviting private sector to come, but we can give them any environment. I think that's a good question for me. Good morning. Okay, thank you. All right, let's tie one hour with the calls. Uh, let's quickly allow someone to tackle these questions. Um, let me um, start with Abdul Rashid. <clears throat> Abdul Rashid, um, I think what you said is germane, um, is the correct position. But trust me, um, 20, 2007, I was going for, I almost finished my education bachelor's degree and I was going for youth service. And that was the time government, the administration then was going and they were trying to create um, power stations, almost an independent power project everywhere, like 27 then. I told my friends, I said, thank God, power problem is over in Nigeria. But trust me, 90% of those things are no longer working. And the money has gone down the drain. If we wait for the government, we are never going to get anything done. That's the simple truth. Until we all wake up and vote them out and vote the people that we feel will do it and put them into power. And um, the not too young, um, not too young to run bill um, is, is getting attention in the Federal Assembly now, in the Nigerian Federal Assemblies. And if they could allow younger people to participate in public, um, uh, policies and politics. Possibly some of these things will change. But okay, you are you're 25 and the government kept on promising you good road, electricity, water. Now you are 28. Those things have not yet changed. Are you going to keep waiting? No, you have your own life to live. So you have to now think out of the box, look a way to mitigate those amenities and infrastructures the government has not put in place and find a way to survive. Nigeria is the survival of the fittest. So if they gave you 650, look for a way to break even. Reinvest it. Within three, four years, you break even and you begin to make profit. Um, going to the first question, is that what are the potentials or the unemployables? Um, we don't have graduates that, like we said, that are unemployable. Their spoken English is bad. The educational um, um, from the education from primary school has been worse, so they can't even speak good English. Let them look into themselves. What has God blessed me with? What can I do that can generate money for me? Where can I go to that they can support me? Um, a friend of mine was doing an analysis of um, 
um, downfall drivers from Lekki to um, Abu Lekba. And we're saying after paying trans after paying the Agbere boys and paying um, the uh, floor for and, and all the charges, they still take on like 30,000 in a month. Multiply that by one year, multiply that four years. They still make money, but young graduates today, you know you won't get this job. So why don't you look for something else to do? Don't think it's dirty. Don't think um my friends would be ashamed when they see me doing this. Think of the future that you will be in the long run able to measure up to them. We have so many organizations that are giving grants. And when I mean grants, grants are money you use, they ensure you use, and you don't have to pay back. As I'm speaking, Fadama guys are out there. The first phase in 27 states of the Federation, in Ogun State, they picked 273 people. They're going to give them maximum of 1 million naira. They're not going to give them the money cash. And that's the good thing about this. You submit a business plan. You look at your business plan. Okay, you said you will need tractor. Who's going to do the tractor for you? They pay the guy to do the tractor. And he comes to your farm and do, do what he needs to do. You said you need um, plantain input. Or is it cassava stem you need or you need rice grains? They don't give you the money to do that. They will give the agro input dealer to supply you so that we can ensure that the money is being used in what it should be used so, for. So, in other words, they're setting up the business. So, they set up the business for you following your business plan. And that's a grant. The CBN BOI thing is also... You, the only collateral you have to give is to drop your NYC certificate. So, and if, if that one is not a grant, it's a loan at 7% or thereabout, and they give it to you. So, but ask NYC core members around you, have they taken up this opportunity? They are not, because they think, um, I don't want to do it, it's dirty, it's this and that. But they will go into the labor market and be disappointed. And there are so many other ones like this. Um, Tony Lumilu Foundation is not going to collect. If you give you $5,000 seed investment, if he says this one is good, he will give you another $5,000 as a matching fund. And so there are so many. We just need to look out for it. We just need to look out for it. And some of these things are there. If you apply for Tony Lumilu, he didn't take you. Go for the CBN one. The CBN one, even five years after you finish serving you can still apply if you apply for that they didn't take you go to Fatherman guys if you apply for them go to ifad vcdp keep trying it's only when we try that we can get these things done and no wait for the government but let us vote in the right government because it's going to be a lot easier for us if we had the right people in place we will look at the infrastructures we need the road to our farms where they will grade it they will give us the input and supply everything we need at the same at the um at the right time currently the state um there is um fertilizer for 5005 for people um subsidized rate actually is meant to be eight thousand for people into agriculture, that is something the government is doing. But their best is not enough, I must say that. But if they can keep doing what they're doing and increase it year in, year out with successive government, then the rates will keep decreasing. All right, let's quickly add these messages to it before I go back to the calls. Uh, Dr. Jumali A.O. from McPherson University says issues of unemployment will still be with Nigeria until the government creates value chains in all aspects of our endeavors. Good roads are internet facility, security, etc., and also encourage the German kind of educational system where students are exposed to the core technical aspect of your course of study on the Chinese system where all unemployed graduates are housed in dormitories around the local government and given a meal per day. Wake up, APC. That's uh, the charge coming from Dr. Uh, uh, Adjumani. All right, this one from uh, Sunday Akebande, Pastor Sunday Akebande, actually. Unemployment is for those that cannot locate their God-given assignment on earth. Some cannot humble themselves, uh, and then they blame government. They may have their reasons, but God has given everybody an assignment to perform. So let them prayerfully discover it, and then go ahead. All right, uh, this one says, I want a resource person in the house to give us some of those websites that give us financial aid to the unemployed Nigerian youth and graduates. Kende Atonda Bakari from Abeguta. Kende Atonda Bakari. If you have an internet facility where you are, I trust you have an Android phone, uh, just go on online and Google it up. Uh, you have almost 100 pages of some of these uh, 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 
uh, clues that you are actually looking for. It's a pity for Nigeria that we experience different problems. Nigeria's problems is uh, Nigeria's problem is high education. Nigeria education lacks self reliance and independence. And children are not trained to be self confident, bold, and more so to discover their gifts, talents, and skills that can promote Nigeria and our economy, such uh, as the Chinese people. Universities should now teach our children skills, not academics, that turn them to job seekers and liabilities. We need independent doctors and workers in Nigeria, not civil servants. That's Edward from Obantoko. And then uh, this one from Alhaji Busura AGA from Kuto says the guest in the house must be commended for the initiative and public enlightenment he's doing. Nigeria's orientation agency needs to do more in public enlightenment as regards these opportunities for youth entrepreneurship schemes available in different sectors of the economy. This will allow our ever increasing unemployed youth to take advantage of the opportunities. However, as a cassava farmer now, uh, how is he tackling the menace of the Fulani headsman in his farm? Or is he not experiencing the menace? God bless Nigeria and Roxy FM. Uh, that's a quick question for you. Uh, are you experiencing uh, the Marodian killer headsman? Uh, at the moment, I am not experiencing that. Um, my farm is deep into the forest. But um, I know a lot of people that are experiencing that. The state government has advocated um, dialogue. So if you see any... Um, full any headsmen on your farm get involved with the police the police will go there with you um take a picture as well um those guys don't like people taking pictures of them so just take a picture um involve the police the police will look for them sit you guys down dialogue and tell them not to come they've not been troublesome i don't think they want to go set up guns like other states so they've not been troublesome here in the state like all other states also there are some other ways of some um, make sure cows don't hit your stuff. Um, find out from your extension agent. Some people have said mix um, dry pepper along your border. Some people have said you should make it gas. So find out from your extension agent um, how those things do happen. But even with them, we can still try and make way um, out of all that we're doing. Another one I would like to talk about, Toby, if you allow me, is the one from McPherson University where he talked about the German system. Yeah, not um, the, the German system is where um, they involve the state. I know about this because I'm a member of Ogun State Chamber of Commerce, Abekutan Chamber of Commerce. Um, together we're doing something called Dual Vocational Training System, DVT, where the Germans come in and train on um, um, mechatronics, um, office administration, project management. Um, they, they call it Dual Vocational because it has to be with people that are member of the um, chamber train people that are working in there so that those skills can be inherited. In Germany, everybody that went to school must have a vocational training. They, they have all the skills. And that's why I hear about the German machines, the German cars and all of that. They have all technical skills. So even if you're whatever you are, you have a technical skills that can be useful for you anywhere you find yourselves. It's some of those things we see when we, come, when we created government technical college, but we did not follow up. And the government have been promising us and promising us. I'm saying they are not doing it the way they should do it. They should increase it. But you guys out there, don't wait for them. Look for a way out of yourself so that we won't be popularized. All right, this question uh, just popped in via the short code. Is there any grant for unemployed Nigerian youth who are not graduates? I know there is for agriculture. Yes, I know there is for agriculture. If you know about the IFAD, IFAD is International Fund for Agriculture. Um, they have a program called Value Chain Development Program. They don't give individuals, so they ask you to form a group. Go to Ogadeb, Ogun State Agricultural Development Program, there in Diaba. That is exactly what I did. Some of the youth just stay at home and be crying. I went straight to Ogadeb and said, guys, I've been hearing news that this government wants to do agriculture. What's there for me? And they began to tell me the programs and the ones that I can key into. And I formed, I did everything they said, and I'm benefiting from it now. So one thing that our generation does not know how to do, we, we don't know how to seek for information. Information is power. Information is key. If we know how to um, WhatsApp and send all sort of messages around, but we don't know how to seek for information. Pending rumors. 
exactly so you see people with data on their phone unemployed you have to talk your data on your phone and all you do is to chat with your friends and play games you did not look for grant for unemployed google that and do something with your data don't just chat and whatsapp and do all those things seek for information all right Agamaria. yeah we just um tweet can join a particular issue being which was raised be realistic to say that it has reduced it temporarily, but my question is, with our rate of inflation, do you strongly agree to that you comment? I guess that was very much <laughs> earlier. And this one came from Ultimate Tune Day. That's just the truth. Okay, what's the truth? That's still not clear. Sheo Falola also tweeted, please, can I have the Twitter handle or pin number of Solomon Enilolubo? He's making a whole lot of sense. Well, we'll get you to know if he will be able to drop that, okay? And then we got this from Professor Agwala AAA. Your guest is wrong. How will a microbiologist determine the growth rate of a bacteria without calculus? DY, DX is very necessary. And um, EOD, drop this, NPAR is a short-term incentive. So by the time the program elapses, we will gladly go back to where we were. We did not prevent but cure. And this came still from Professor Bola AAA. I agree the curricula in our universities, polytechnics, and colleges must be restructured to meet the needs of a country. And Olanino Oladayo also tweeted, how do we access loan? Can you give us some organization who will not put heavy interest rate or demand collateral? Ayami Da Vinci tweeted, mm, youth unemployment, we are still not serious with things that matter in this country. It's a keg of gunpowder. The biggest demographic in the 2006 consensus, census rather, was a 9 to 16 years, making the then 9 year olds the ones finishing WIAC this year. Uh, this came from at Nuru underscore Smith. Our government in this country did not like the youth. Did you see millions of Naira okay, that was used for just a wedding some weeks back? <laughs> Uh, did we see any millions of naira? Go to Yamida Vinci's um, suite. <laughs> what are our plans for this youth? They will en get into universities to be trained for jobs and past economic climbs that do not exist again. Olani Rolodayo also tweeted, Lack of reliable database by the government also makes it difficult to access loan. Yamida Vinci tweeted again, We need to learn from India. We need to open up new industries that can compete in the world market. We need new skills. We need new ideas. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur as the skills to succeed as one are not only technical, but emotional. It cannot alone solve unemployment. Still coming from Yemi Da Vinci, we should train the youth with emotional ability to be entrepreneurs, technical skills, and all these enough soft skills to compete on world level. All right, this is the tweet here. All right, let's quickly take a few more calls. Hello, day. A very good for the man in the house. Only our talents and skills uh, can help Nigerian economy. Nigerians need no white collar jobs. Edward from Obantubo Center, that one. And then Elder Tony Shumuiwa from Kumba Town says, and Toby, look, I disagree with the submission of your guest speaker that said uh, hotel business is meant only for the employment of barmen and prostitutes. It is capital, no. Hotel itself is an industry which without this, the investors coming for the first time to the country and our people time in reference will have no comfortable place of abode. Moreover, it is an industry which even attracts more tourists to the country and play a major role in the country for an exchange earnings. I advise that the guests should uh, learn more about this important industry. Uh, instead of giving wrong impressions. Well, that's an authority. Show me what you want to be clear with that. All right, uh, uh, let me quickly take the tweet here. Okay, this tweet. came from Yumi Vinci. <coughs> the real solution to unemployment is a multifaceted approach of active government engagement and huge paradigm shifts of the population. Oladi Roladayo tweeted, I have some of my brothers who applied for the Fadama since last year, but up to now, nothing is coming. Planting season is all right. Let's yeah, I mean, let's let's start with that last one. Government can be slow with many of those things they do. Um, even the Faragama guys program is still on, but 
they've, they've not given them all they need to give them but the fact is there that they are going to give them um let me quickly talk on the hotel um hotels don't bring in investors um and tourism tourists stay in the hotel when they come around it is something like only more that can bring in tourists then when they come around they now stay in way of prepare for them but why are we just only building hotels why are we not building industries is that the only thing we can do let me tell you it's laziness that is it's, it's cheap money so that is what we can easily do and set up bars and drink and marry and that's what we can easily do it doesn't even need a business plan just do it and go on but the ones that take the intellect they can pre create a production line and employ two thousand people employ 700 people that's what we are not doing so it's good that we are building hotels but let us do something more let us go beyond the hotels um somebody said the ydx is using calculating the growth of microbial growth well my lecturers did not teach me from a of my university and even to now even when i did my masters in public health they never taught me how to use the ydx for that um the the, the professor from funap said um pascal and all those of course those things are outdated tell me that's what they are teaching young kids in japan Tell me that's what they are taking young kids in South Korea and all the developing ones. They are making all the phones in China. They are making all the phones we are using. It's the idea they are teaching them or they are to manufacture the, all this and transistor reading we are doing. I mean, we are using is created by small kids in those schools as their project. So we are keep we keep doing the YDX and nothing comes out of it. Well, if you can come, let something come out of it, maybe we will agree. Um, somebody said, hey, no, do it for. It's true. But some of those things I've mentioned there are things that I've participated in and things that I've enjoyed. So, um, if one, and um, sometimes as I applied for to the Illumini Foundation, I wasn't paid. So, it does not mean any do no for, but if you, it does not mean I've applied for other ones which I was picked. So, we should keep applying. Don't let us give up hope. Um, we are saying the government has to do something. Um, the, the current government is doing something, but it is not enough, and so they should do more. But people, you can't wait until the government to do everything. We have to go out there and do it. If they have to provide the enabling environment in the next, um, when the election is coming, if the government in power do not give you the enabling environment, vote them out. Don't just go and collect 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira, and vote them in again. Vote them out. Vote in another set. If the ones you voted in don't do it, vote in another one till we find a government that can do what we're saying. We've been crying about all of these infrastructure things for a very long time and it is not being done. How long are you going to wait for the government to do them? So look inward, look for what you can do and survive. Thank you very much. Uh, beautiful submissions uh, from our participants, uh, those who come to those who send messages, and of course, uh, those who tweeted. It's been a very robust engagement and debate this morning. We want to appreciate you, Solomon and Dinanubo, for honoring our invitation. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, that's our this morning. Join us again tomorrow, bright and early, 7 a.m. The day make sure kicks off. Make sure you don't miss it. I am Toby Joseph. Have a wonderful week.